in my presentation, um, I'm going to have a review on our recent progress in developing a new type of radio xenon detector based on beta gamma coincident technique. As may, you may know, beta gamma coincident technique is a very, very efficient uh, technique to detect ultra low concentrations of radio xenon in atmosphere. And most of the stations, they equipped with detectors based on this technique. Okay, I'm gonna start with research objectives. <coughs> uh, we want to design, build, and test very compact radio xenon detectors using room temperature detectors, specifically using CZT detectors through beta gamma coincident counting. So to increase the solid angle, we want to build a detector with multiple crystals to just cover the whole solid angle and then digital process all the signals from these detectors. And we believe that uh, using this uh, system, we can build detection system with better energy resolution, reduced memory effect that is currently experienced with uh, uh, current detectors, reducing on detectors, <coughs> improved minimum detectable concentration, or MDC, a reduced power, size, weight, and cost. We're gonna build several prototypes. These prototypes will help us to understand the, the response of detectors like this, uh, and then find the, the best uh, parameters to run the detector. And we will find the best solution. So, we started with a very, very simple design using just two CZT crystals. In most of the detectors based on beta gamma coincident, they use two separate channels, one for detecting beta, one for detecting gamma ray. Now we want to use the same detector for detecting beta and detecting gamma ray, but we want to detect them when two coincident events we get from our detection system. We just record those coincident events. And we put these crystals face to face to detect both beta and gamma ray. So you may be wondering what is the coincident probability? I'm not talking about coincident efficiency. It's more related to solid angle that these two detectors can detect uh, two particles or these particles can enter the detector. When you have two crystals face to face, this probability is something around 5.6%. <clears throat> so I excluded those events in which two particles enter a single detector. I'm talking about coincident detection. If you have six elements surrounding the whole, the all, all size of cubic gas cell, it's going to be 83.3%. So we want to start with our first prototype, which has only two crystals. So first we built a gas cell using uh, uh, 3D printing. As you see, this is a gas cell we built and then we put two 10 by 10 by 10 millimeter coplanar CZT crystals on two sides and we uh, air sealed those two crystals. And as you see here, the total volume of our gas cell is one cubic centimeter. And this is our detector, as you see here. We put our gas cell, including CZD crystals, inside a enclosure, as you see. And also four preamplifiers, two subtraction PCBs, all mounted in the enclosure. And detector pulses were digitized and transferred to the PC by our two channel, 200 megahertz digital pulse processor. We developed this digital pulse processor in our lab for our phosphorus detector for detecting radio xenon. And this is a perfect device for this prototype. As you see here, here is the uh, gas cell electronics and this is the gas injection tube for injecting radio xenon into the detector. We, we did all processing in do digital domain. To measure the amplitude of pulses, we used trapezoidal, digital trapezoidal filter. 
So the nice thing about using trapezoidal filter is that you can individually uh, adjusting the uh, feature of the shaping, like flat top, like rise time. And usually it is a good practice to, uh, to set the uh, flat top of the trapezoidal filter to accommodate the rise time of the preamplifier output. By checking the detector and putting a source at the top of the gas cell, we notice that almost 10 to 15 percent of pulses look like this. They have two pulses. So these are not pileup. These are from multi-interaction in just one single uh, crystal. So like Compton events, so we have a Compton scattering and the scatter photon can be absorbed in different depths. When we have a different depths, so they arrive in different times. So we have to use a trapezoidal filter to accommodate both pulses to measure the full absorption of the energy inside the detector. As you see here, the distance between these two pulses is about 0.75. So it was a good practice to have a flat top longer than electron drift time. So if you do a simple calculation, you can find out that the electron uh, uh, drift time for this crystal with this biasing voltage is something around one microsecond. And that's why we set the uh, flat top of our the digital uh, trapezoidal filter to one microsecond. So in... Uh, <coughs> Before we inject the radio xenon inside the detector, we have to find out what a strategy we have to use to detect coincident pulses. <coughs> so instead of using traditional method to have a time stamp and then record all pulses and then figure out which one is coincident, which one is not coincident, we decided to go with <coughs> FPGA. So we, we perform our coincident detection in hardware, in FPGA. So we designed a unit uh, in, uh, in our FPGA, as you see here, the red box shows two state machines get, get, can be triggered by one channel and then initiate a counter. Even if during that counting, another trigger arrive, so we say this is a coincident. So the software in the PC continuously watching a signal from this uh, unit or coincident unit. As you see, we call it coincident ready. When it is high and then the PC side start uploading the uh, coincident events. So FPGA approved that this is coincident before the PC upload the pulses. And the coincident detection unit is only active in coincident mode. We have two modes, free running mode and coincident mode. And also, there is a coincident time window in which if we have uh, a, coincident, a coincident event and fallen into this window, timing window, and then this unit uh, issue that coincident ready signal. So what, what was the coincident time window that we can go with? So pulse arrival time in coplanar CZT detector is a function of interaction depth. So you may have, two, you may have a coincident event between two detectors, but, but you may not arrive at your detection system simultaneously. It depends on the depth of interaction. One of them may be very close to cathode, one of them very close to anode, in terms if we have two gamma rays. But here we have beta and gamma. Beta interact very close to cathode, and uh, gamma can interact anywhere from uh, distances very close to cathode or anode. So we did a very, very simple experiment to figure out what is the best uh, timing or uh, coincident time window. We put a cobalt 60 at the top of our gas cell and then expose two detectors simultaneously. And then we set the FPGA firmware to coincident mode. And then we start measuring the count rate by increasing the coincident time window. You know that cobalt 60 emit two cascading photons, 1.1, 1.3, and they are emitted in coincident. So if we have a coincident between these two detectors and we set that coincident time, we can see how the count rate will change. And you can see it from this graph. 
by changing the coincident time window. And you see that we have a, a rising uh, a contrade until we, we arrive at one point here, which is very close to maximum drift time, which is one microsecond. So it was a good practice to set the coincident time window less than that, that one. And also for radio xenon detection, we expect that we have a smaller coincident time window. For, our, for the rest of experiment, we set that time to be 0.75 microsecond. So before we inject radio xenon, we tested our radiation detection system using cesium-137 and cobalt-60. And again, here I have to emphasize that this result that you are seeing was obtained when the source was at the top of the gas cell. So we exposed the detector from a source, not from the cathode side, from the, the, the up side, from the top of the uh, gas cell, as you see here. And we believe if we put the source inside the gas cell and expose the detector from the cathode side, we, we definitely get better resolution. So the best resolution that we got was 2.3%. We are still thinking that we have n some noises and we can achieve better uh, resolution later by just finding the source of noise. This is a uh, prototype. And you can see the noise level. It was 11.6 uh, kV FWHM for cesium-137 when we check it with pulsar. So that was a good time to inject radio xenon to see the response of the detector. We produce xenon-135 by activating xenon-134. So we activated a small amount of xenon-134, enriched and stable. The enrichment was more than, larger than 99%. Uh, was irritated in the thermal column of our trigger reactor for seven hours. And we injected xenon-135 after about 17 hours. And here you can see the manifold that we used to inject uh, xenon-135 into the detector. So before I show you the result, I want to show you this table to have some idea what energies we have to see if we inject xenon-135. Xenon-135 emit 250 kV gamma ray in coincidence with beta particles with maximum energy of about 900 kV. And this is the 2D beta gamma spectra that we got from <coughs> xenon-135. We got this result about two weeks ago. So in this graph, the x-axis represent energy absorption in CZT1, or channel 1. And y-axis represent energy absorption in CZT number two. So you can see two crossing lines here. The horizontal line represent events that are from gamma release in CZT number one, specifically photopeak region from 250 kV. And it is extended from zero energy to about 900 kV when the beta is absorbed in CZT number two. And for the vertical line, these events are populated when the gamma ray, sorry, uh, I was talking about the horizontal one, and for the vertical one, sorry, for the horizontal one, uh, uh, gamma ray in CZT2 and beta in CZT1, and the, uh, the vertical one when we have gamma ray in CZT1 and beta in CZT2. So it is interested, interesting that we can see a line, a diagonal, line here, sure. that's okay. This line, I'm talking about this line. This line is appeared here when we have full energy deposition from Compton events between the two detectors. So for getting this spectra, we set the FPGA operational mode on coincident. And we can see this line. So this, this shows that we were actually in coincident mode because we can see those events. So these are the, uh, the spectrum, individual from individual spectrum from the two channels. They are very, very identical. You can see a peak here from 250 kV, and you can see a peak is riding on a beta continuum. 
So the, the best resolution that we got was 4.4% from uh, CZT1, and for CZT2, we got 4.7%. Uh, and actually, you can see a peak here, which represents cadmium telluride X-ray escape peak. And th this one is very interesting because we set the FPG operational <laughs> mode on free running mode. You can uh, still see those lines, but you cannot see that diagonal line. And this is an example from RSA technology developed at PNNL. This is a radio xenon detector. They, it uses uh, sodium iodide and plastic scintillators and 12 photomultipliers to detect beta and gamma ray. And you can see the uh, signature of xenon 135. Uh, so the x axis represents beta energy, and y axis represents uh, gamma energy. So this is our result from uh, uh, our detector when it is compared to other radio xenon detector. You can see that we, we got the better energy resolution and also we have very, very low coincident and uh, total event background rate. And this is from our simulation. Uh, one of my PhD students has a poster here, so I encourage you to visit her uh, simulation on poster number six. And we have other ongoing projects. One of them is eight, developing an eight channel, 14 bit, 125 megahertz digital pulse processing system. We want to build more prototype with more elements, so we need more channel. <coughs> we decided to uh, build our own digital processor because if you, if you buy an off the shelf the, the digital pulse processor, they don't provide you source code. We want to make our own. And other projects is to miniaturize our preamplifier subtraction PCB and use it in a aluminum uh, gas cell and also depositing pattern on crystals. So future work uh, include uh, reducing the noise level. Right now the noise level is about at about 40 kV, 45 kV. We are interested to detect 30 kV from other radio xenon. Other works are testing the detector with other radio xenon, calculating minimum detectable concentration and test and troubleshoot a channel uh, the uh, pulse processor. Conclusion, we have built two elements, CZT detector, FPGA firmware, preliminary results shows better resolution, and we have built compact eight channel FPGA based uh, digital pulse processor, and thank you so much. So uh, as Milton indicated again, we just got access to uh, roadmap, uh, what is it, uh, ground-based uh, nuclear detonation,